वेलकम बैक प्रॉब्लम सिक्स डैश वन जीरो टू सो स्टेटमेंट इज इफ कंसनट्रेटेड फोर्स पी इज टू किलो न्यूटन इज अप्लाइड एट द फ्री एंड ऑफ ओवर हैंगिंग बीम डिटरमाइन द एब्सोलूट मैक्सिमम टेंसाइल एंड कंप्रेसिव स्ट्रेस डेवलप इन द बीम सो यू कैन सी दिस इज ओवर हैंगिंग बीम एट पॉइंट ए देर इज अ पिन सपोर्ट वाइल एट पॉइंट बी वी हैव अ रोलर सपोर्ट एट द फ्री एंड वी हैव अ पी दैट इज टू किलो न्यूटन इज अप्लाइड सो ड्यू टू दिस लोडिंग दिस बीम विल will behave like this the upper one layer will be in um, tensile while lower layer will be in the compression clear so we have to find this sigma maximum t tensile and here we will find sigma maximum compression the cross section of this beam is shown over here so let's start and uh, solve this problem as we know that uh, maximum stress is equal to maximum bending moment into c divided by i we do not know maximum bending moment we will find it by using the shear force and bending moment diagram so for that what we will do is that if you remove this support at point a so we will having force similarly if you remove this support at point b we will have a force since this force is downward this force will be upward and let this is rb and this force will be downward that is r a so by using equilibrium condition that sum of all moment about point a is equal to zero and taking the counterclockwise moment as positive so about point a one moment is due to r b into perpendicular distance two meter and that is producing counterclockwise so it will be positive the second moment will be this due to this p load and perpendicular distance is three and that is producing clockwise so it will be negative their sum must be equal to zero so i will write it 2rb minus p is 2 kilo newton so 2 into 3 is equal to zero so from here we will get uh, rb is equal to 3 kilo newton now you have this rb you can find R A by using equilibrium condition that sum of all forces along y direction must be equal to zero and upward force is taken as positive. So minus R A because it is downward plus R B which is three kilo newton minus P is equal to zero and P is two kilo newton so I will write direct two equal to zero. So from here you will get R A will be equal to one kilo newton. Now you have both this value, you can go toward drawing shear force and bending moment diagram. So what we will do is that we will draw a vertical line from the end of this beam. Clear similarly from this edge, you will draw a vertical line. Okay, for shear force, you will have to draw a horizontal line that will show X in meter length. Here we will draw the shear force in kilonewton. Let each division is of uh, 1 kilo newton, so 1, 2, this is 2, this is minus 1, this is minus 2. Now you can see that at point uh, A, we have RA which is downward minus 1, so its first point will be this one. Moving from RA to B, RB, there is no other force, so it will remain same, it will be horizontal it will remain same till this point okay now at point b you can see rb which is three kilo newton so minus one plus three is equal to plus two so the shear force will change from minus one to plus two this is plus two and then there is no other force from b to till p so it will remain same and at point p you can see that there is minus 2, P is min 2 kilonewton. So minus 2, that is downward. So it will bring to 0. So this is your shear force diagram. Now we will draw the bending moment diagram. So for bending moment diagram, again, I have to draw a horizontal line, X in meter. Here you will having moment that is in kilonewton into meter. Again, uh, we will take uh, this as 1 kilonewton into meter 2. Similarly, minus 1 minus 2 kilo newton into meter the first area under the shear force diagram is minus 1 into uh, 2 which is minus 2 so 
uh, you can see that this is minus 2 so first we will look at minus 2 so minus 2 will be this this point okay now you can see that a shear force is a horizontal line with zero degrees of first moment will be one degree higher and slope will be decreasing because this area is negative so you will get a straight line like this this is minus two and now what about this area this area is equal to two into one which is plus two so minus two plus two will bring it to zero till this point so we will get the bending moment like this now um, definitely you can see that uh, maximum absolute value of bending stress bending moment sorry bending moment is minus 2 minus 2 so if I take the mod, so that will be maximum absolute value of bending moment will be equal to 2 kilo Newton into meter. So you have this value, we know that sigma max is equal to maximum bending moment into C divided by I. So we do not have I and C. So for that, what we will do is that I have already taken, we will move it upward okay so you can see this is the cross section of the beam so c is not known uh, okay c is not so this beam is not symmetrical so we do not know the uh, location of its neutral axis location of neutral axis or centroidal axis clear uh, so what we will do is that we will find the cent its, uh, centroidal axis. Neutral axis or centroidal axis. Centroidal axis. So what we will do, how we will find So we will find them by using this equation that y bar is equal to sum of y dash into a divided by sum of area. So you can see you have three planks. One is this, second is this, and third one is this. So if you take this base as reference, so from here you will calculate this, the location of centroidal axis. So first we will calculate for these two, this one and this one. So I will write two times um, this area. This area is, you can see this is height is 200 millimeter and width is 25 so we will write this area area multiply so 0 0.225 millimeter is 0 0.025 meter and 200 millimeter is 0 0.200 and its center y dash will be its center this is this one will be its y1 dash because let this is 1 1 and this is 2 so this y dash and this y dash is equal to 100 from this base clear and this 100 millimeter is 0 0.1 okay plus now we have this the term of second term so plus this area which is 25 by 150 so 25 is again 0 0.025 into uh, 150 150 0.150 clear into now what is y2 dash y2 dash is the cent distance from the base till the centroid of the second part so this distance is 25 millimeter uh, sorry 25 divided by 2 which is 12.5 similarly this is also 12.5 so 12.5 plus 200 is 212.5 so this is y2 dash which is equal to um, this was 100 millimeter so this is y dash 212.5 millimeter okay so we will write y2 dash is in meter it will be uh, 0 0.2125 meter divide by sum of area so sum of area is we have two areas of one so two multiply by 0 
into zero point zero two five clear plus this area which of two which is zero point one five zero multiply by zero point zero two five so when you calculate it you will get this y dash comes out to be 0 0.13068 meter so what does it mean it means that your uh, centroidal axis lies at a distance of 130 this is your y dash this is your neutral axis so y dash is equal to 130 point Six eight millimeter is equal to zero point one three zero six eight meter. Okay, now we have this value. Why we can calculate I? So how we will calculate I? So we know that uh, this is not symmetrical. So we will use area moment theorem that is equal to I bar plus A D square. Clear. So we have for for first these two are same so i will call it one so it will be equal to uh, two times one over 12 its breadth which is 25 so in meter it is 0 0.025 and height is 200 millimeter which is 0 0.200 whole q clear plus since this uh, centroidal axis is not align with this centroidal axis of 1 so this will be its d this is its d so area into d square so area is again 0 0.025 and 0 0.2 and d is this distance now this distance is equal to y dash minus y1 so y dash is 0 0.13068 minus y1 is 0 0.1 whole square plus the area of uh, the moment of inertia of this second part so i will write it 1 over 12 b h cube b is 0 0.15 its breadth and height is 25 millimeter so in meter it is 0 0.025 whole cube plus ad square so area is 0 0.15 into d is 0 0.025 and what about d so d is this 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 distance is this distance is t2 this is d1 and this is d2 so this distance you can see that is equal to 212 minus this will give minus this distance will give you this d2 so i will write 0 212.2 is actually 0 0.2125 meter minus 0. Point, minus 0 0.13068 whole square because this is d square so when you solve this you will get the moment of inertia comes out to be 68.045 into 10 to the power minus 6 meter 4 so this is your moment of inertia now we will call uh, we will find a uh, absolute absolute maximum bending stress that is ten for tensile as well as compressive so for tensiles tensile are in the upper portion we have sigma max tensile is equal to maximum moment into y divided by i so maximum bending moment uh, is 2 you can see here we have calculated 2 kilo newton into meter so i will write it 2 into 10 to power 3 now what about y y is since the top one i will show you since the top one layer is experiencing tensile so you can see the new uh, from neutral axis till top this distance will be equal to total height total height this total height 
this total height minus this distance which is y so total is 225 millimeter so i will write 225 which is 0 0.225 minus y dash which is 0 0.13068 divide by i and i is 68.045 into 10 to the power minus 6 meter 4 so when you calculate it you will get maximum tens bending stress due to tensile or in upper portion is equal to 2.77 mega pascal okay now we will move toward the lower portion where which will experience compressive so for compressive we have maximum bending stress compressive will be equal to maximum bending moment into c divided by i and c is the maximum distance from neutral axis so again maximum bending moment is 2 into 10 to power 3 and c now you can see in downward from neutral axis till downward this distance is equal to y dash which is this so c will be this so 0 0.13068 divided by 68.045 into 10 to the power minus 6 so again when you calculate it maximum bending stress due to compression comes out to be 3.84 mega pascal so due to this the beam will due to the ball loading the beam will behave like this not like this it will be just like so here you will be having maximum tensile and in downward or lower layer you will be having maximum bending stress due to compression both values are calculated over here and this was all about problem 6 dash 102 i hope you have enjoyed this video and you have learned from it those who are new to my channel then subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon for upcoming videos if you have any question you can ask me in comment section thank you for watching